Constant Velocity Quiz Review, which you did in class on Friday, March 3rd, especially for my um, second period class because I'm going to be out with a medical appointment on Monday, March 6th, and we have a quiz on Tuesday, March 7th. So I want to go through all this. Um, it wouldn't be bad for other classes to listen to this also. So basically the idea here is transferring information from a position time graph to a velocity time graph. And a little bit of this was cut off, which was annoying. This is a velocity time graph. This is meant to be zero velocity over here in meters per second. So you've got graph A, which is here, graph B, which is here, and graph C, which is here. So describing the motion of objects A, B, and C, these are all going a constant velocity because they all have a constant slope on the position graph. A has a constant positive velocity because it's got a constant positive slope. B has a constant positive velocity, has a constant positive slope. C has a constant negative velocity because it has a constant positive or negative slope as well. Um, so, put this down here. And Don't know why I didn't finish that up when I hand wrote those answers. At any rate, um, the objects ever going the same speed, nope, the slopes of the position time graphs were all different. Which object was going faster? I would say A and C were going faster. They have steeper slopes. Did all the objects start in the same position? Nope. The y-intercept here tells us they start differently. Looks like A starts at the origin or zero meters. B starts at 3 meters, C starts at somewhere around 5 meters. And again, these were not numbered, probably should have been. Again, I, th I thought they were, but that did not transfer over to a Word document from a Google Doc. So if I want to find the slope for all objects, indicate which points you use in your graph, and just count the individual block blocks for your slope values. So I assumed every block this way was a meter, and every block this way was a second. So in this case for A, I ended up picking two points on the graph. I picked here and here. It looked like it was about 4.5 meters and 0 meters, and it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seconds. So the slope of the graph is 4.5 meters over 11 seconds. That's about 0.41 meters per second. For B, I took these two points, took five or 4 meters minus 3 meters, and that took about 6 seconds, so 1 meter over 6 seconds. It's about 0.167 meters per second for C. Starts at 5 meters. At this point, it's 3 meters. That took 4 seconds. So it's about negative 0.5 meters per second. So I guess technically for this one, C is going the fastest. But that was unclear to me before I'd done the calculation. What do you notice about the lines in graph 2 compared to line 1? Well, these are all horizontal. This is a velocity graph. So this agrees that this has a constant positive velocity. This has a constant positive velocity. C has a constant negative velocity. Um, the lines in graph one represent uh, the positions of the objects. The lines in graph two represent the velocities. So the slope of the lines in graph one also represent velocity. Page two here. If I have a constant velocity moving slowly, constantly in the positive direction, it's a horizontal line, a little above zero velocity. In the negative direction, it's a little below zero horizontal line. Moving quickly but constantly, it should be a horizontal line quite a bit above zero, quite a bit below zero for a horizontal line for an object moving quickly in the negative direction. And not moving at all, these should be on the zero line. So again, all these graphs are horizontal positive direction so if it has a positive velocity negative direction has a negative velocity so the difference between moving slowly and moving quickly is you're further away from zero when you're moving quickly as opposed to moving slowly whether that's in the positive or negative direction and then there's no difference between positive and negative directions if you're not moving because it's zero meters per second The last part here is using the information to create the velocity time graph, and this was numerical. It showed up correctly on your sheet. Oh, this should have had seconds on it, I guess. 
So I figured out the slope for each of these graphs. Slope is one meter per second, slope is zero, slope is two meters per second. <clears throat> so this is plus one meter per second, zero, plus two meters per second. Here the slope was plus 1.5, you go up three over, divided by two. Here the slope was 0.5, you go up two, divided by four. So this is 1.5 meters per second, 0 0.5 meters per second. For this one, the slope of this part, you're going up three meters in three seconds, so the slope is one meter per second. Here the slope is negative three meters per second because you're decreasing by six meters in two seconds. So my velocity is plus one and my velocity is minus three. What happens to the steep slopes from the position time graphs? When you turn them into velocity time graphs, they become velocities that are pretty far away from zero. So this is a very steep slope. This is a line that's very far away from zero. This is the zero line. Where's the line on the velocity time graph if the object's not moving? That's at zero meters per second. So in this region, the slope is zero, so the velocity is zero. Predict what you think a velocity time graph would look like if you roll a ball down a hill. So it didn't say whether or not there was friction, which means that that could affect whether you think the ball is speeding up or not. So I'm going to take a variety of answers for this. If you think the ball is speeding up, the graph would look like this. So you'd have an increasing positive velocity. If not, if you think it's going at constant speed, then this would be a horizontal line. You could, Again, for this one, you could think of a constant negative velocity or negative velocity that you're going faster and faster if you're rolling downhill and speeding up in the opposite direction. So this shows something that's getting faster and speeding up in the negative direction. What do you predict velocity time graph would look like if a car coasted to a stop? So that does say that it's stopping. So that basically says you've got a velocity and it's going down to zero. Here, if it's coasting to a stop in the opposite direction, we can think of it as negative that's going up towards zero. Either way, in these cases, if it ends at a stop, the velocity graph should look at zero at the end. Again, this doesn't particularly say which direction it's going, so you could interpret those a little bit differently, but it should end up at zero meters per second. Hopefully this helps, and hopefully help you prepare for your quiz.